Okay, so this week we're going to learn or go back over uh, basic division, but we're also going to do division with decimals. Um, and so right here, we're going to start um, with these basic division problems, and then we're going to go over to these with decimals. Okay, so right here, the first thing we do is evaluate whether or not the 4 can go into the 2 any times. Now, this is different when you do it with decimals, but without decimals, you just slide over to the next number and see, can the 4 go into the 26 any amount of times? And it can. can't go into the 2 because the 2 is smaller, but it can go into the 26 six times. 6 times 4 is 24. You write your 24 there. I forgot to put a subtraction sign there, but no in division. All you do is uh, subtract. Uh, you do not add. And so um, 6 times 4 is 24, and uh, 26 minus 24 is 2. So we write our 2 there. We bring our 6 down, and we see how many times the 4 can go into the 26. We just did that, so we already know a 6. Then 6 times 4 is 24. So we write our 24 there, and we subtract again. 26 minus 24 gives us a remainder of 2. So our answer for 266 divided by 4 is 66 with a remainder of 2. We on to the next problem. Can the 2 go into the 6? Yes, it can. 3 times. 3 times 2 equals 6. We write our 6 there and our subtraction sign there, and we subtract. Um... So the 6 minus 6 equals 0. We don't have to write our 0, but we're going to certainly bring our 9 down. How many times does the 2 go into the 9? It goes in 4 times. 4 times 2 equals 8. We're going to write our 8 under our 9 and subtract. 9 minus 8 equals 1. So our answer for 69 divided by 2 is 34 with a remainder of 1. Um, you don't have to write a big R. You could simply write a small R. Uh, when you get ready to write your answer. Okay, then our next problem is really simple. We don't have any remainders with it, but we're going to go through it. 7 can't go into 5, but it can go into 50. So we're going to uh, see how many times it goes into 50. That'll be 7 times. So 7 times 7, we know is 49 because we know our basic multiplication facts. We're going to subtract 50 minus 49 gives us 1. Uh, we're going to bring our 4 down and divide again and see how many times the 7 can go into the 14. We know it can go in 2 times, and 2 times 7 equals 14. We're going to subtract 14 minus 14, leaves us with 0. We don't have to put a 0 down there, but it's okay to get in the habit of doing so. Um, then our next problem, um, know that 8 can't go into the 6, but it certainly can go into the 63. So uh, 8 times, I'm sorry, 8 goes into the 63 7 times times and 7 times 8 equals 56. Then we're going to do our basic subtraction here. We know that 3, we can't subtract 6 from 3, so we have to make that a 13. We're going to make that a 5. Um, and then that's going to leave us with 7. We're going to bring down our 3, and we have 73 to divide with now. And so our 8 goes into 73 9 times. And so we're going to write our 9 there and then multiply. 9 times 8 equals 72. So 73 minus 72 will give us a 1. So we'll have a, a 633 divided by 8 gives us an answer of 79 with a remainder of 1. Then we're going to move on to decimals. In decimals, we're going to write all of our zeros and bring them all down because there will come a time where the zeros will have significant value when we deal with decimals, okay? And so... Um, as a different place value than numbers that don't have decimals, okay? And we learned it already. Uh, so in this case, we know that the 1 can't go into the 0, but we got to make that, we got to uh, mark that 0 down because this 0 is important, okay? Um, the 2 goes into the 1 0 times. We're going to write that 0 there. I'm going to simply bring our decimal up to here. 
uh, from in the problem into our answer slot. And so uh, we're going to write our zero there and then we're going to uh, multiply zero times two equals two because zero times any number equals zero. I'm sorry. I said two and I meant zero. So zero times two equals zero. And then uh, one minus zero equals one. We're going to bring our eight down and then two goes into 18 nine times. But make sure we put our nine to the right of the decimal because we're done putting numbers to the left of the decimal at this point. Nine times two equals equals 18. We're going to subtract 18 minus 18 is equals zero. We're going to slide our two down, bring our two down. Uh, then we're going to uh, see how many times the two can go into another two. That's going to be one time. And then we're going to do one times two equals two. Then we're going to subtract two minus two equals zero. Don't have to write a zero anywhere. So we know that 1.82 divided by two equals 0 0.91. This problem is just like this problem, so I'm not going to go over it, but you could pause the video at this time and go through it uh, on your own if you'd like. Uh, but it's more important that I discuss these two problems, so I'm going to go through both of them. Uh, the 8 is going to go into the 8 one time. Uh, so we're going to place our 1 there, place our decimal to the right of the 1, and we're going to multiply. 1 times 8 equals 8. Uh, 8 minus 8 equals 0. We're just going to imagine that it's there right now. We're going to bring it down in the end. Uh, but we're going to bring our 3 down right now. Uh, and then our 8 goes into our 3 0 times. So we're going to write our 0 there. 0 times 8 equals 0. Um, and then we're going to subtract. 3 minus 0 equals 3. And we're going to bring our 7 down. And then 8 uh, goes into 37 4 times. So we're going to write our 4 here and then we're going to multiply 4 times 8 equals 32. 37 minus 32 will give us a 0 there, but it will give us a 5 here. This is where you bring down all your zeros. You already have a 0 and a 5 here. Bring that 0 from the 8 minus 8 all the way down here. And then we're going to count our decimal spots. 1, 2. We're going to uh, place them here. 1, 2. So that's how we get over 2 times. And this is why our zeros are important. Because this is just not simply 5, it is 0 0.05, okay? Then our last problem, um, the 9 will go into the 5 zero times. We we'll place our 0 there and place our decimal right next to it, bringing it right above uh, the one that's below in the problem. And 0 times 9 is 0. And then 5 minus 0 equals 5. And then we're going to slide our 4 down. And so we're going to... Uh, See how many times the 9 goes into 54. We know it goes in 6 times, and then 6 times 9 is 54. Um, so we'll bring our first 0 down right here, and then we'll slide our 8 down. So 8, we're going to bring it down, and then our 9 goes into the 8. Zero times. We're going to write our zero there. Zero times nine equals zero again. And so uh, zero, eight, or just eight minus uh, zero equals eight. So we're going to bring our eight down, and then we're going to bring that zero down and that zero down. And then we're going to count our decimal uh, spaces to know how many times to go over. One, two. And so we'll go one, two. And then that gives us an answer of, I mean, a remainder of zero. 0.05, so 5.48 divided by 9 is 0 0.60 with a remainder of 0 0.08. So these zeros have a different value than if we were doing problems over here where we could just omit the zeros and imagine them there. We have to actually place them in the problems with the decimals because they have value when we get to the end of what our remainder is. It gives us an exact value so we can know an exact answer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.